Okay, we are now getting started <coughs> with the afternoon. We begin with something very special, uh, which is the award of four very special prizes. The Henry Allen Moe Prize is awarded annually for the best paper in the humanities or jurisprudence read at a meeting of the American Philosophical Society. And Elizabeth Cropper, one of our vice presidents and chair of the Henry Allen Moe Prize Selection Committee will present this year's award. The American Philosophical Society is pleased to award the 2019 Henry Allen Moe Prize in the Humanities to Alexander Jones in recognition of his paper entitled, Like Opening a Pyramid and Finding an Atomic Bomb, Derek de Sala Price and the Antikythera Mechanism. This paper was read at the American Philosophical Society's 2017 November meeting and published in its September 2018 proceedings. Alexander Jones is professor of history of the exact sciences in antiquity and Leon Levy, director of the Institute for the Study of the Ancient World, New York University. As Jones puts it, his paper is in a sense a review of an American Philosophical Society research grant and its outcomes. The story of discoveries and near misses begins with a 1958 APS grant to Derek de Sala Price in 1900 and 1901, small pieces of corroded metal were salvaged from a Hellenistic shipwreck off the island of Antikythera. Identified as parts of a mechanism, they attracted little attention until close examination by Price suggested that the mechanism was not an Archimedean planetarium, as thought, but a mechanical representation of the ancient Babylonian arithmetical approach to mathematical astronomy. Jones shows how such new techniques as microfocus X-ray computed tomography and reflectance transformation imaging have made it possible to improve Price's reconstruction. The mechanism was not a calendar computer, far less an atomic bomb in a pyramid, but a sophisticated instrument that displayed the synodic cycles of the planets. Price lacked adequate radiography and failed to recognize that the dials consisted of spirals, not concentric circles. But his successors were able to untangle the meaning of the mechanism, thanks in part to Price and his APS grant. In part, a historical detective story about the most important fine machinery to survive from antiquity. In part, a history of scientific inquiry and new technologies Jones's paper renders comprehensible the complex story of this ancient artifact. And so on behalf of the Moe Prize Committee, it's my great pleasure to present the Henry Allen Moe Prize to Alexander Jones. Long be well, when I was in my student days, long before I knew what the American Philosophical Society was, I was very conscious of it as a tremendous supporter of uh, research and publication in the uh, rather rarefied field of history of, of the exact sciences and antiquity. Uh, just to give one example, uh, I learned early on that if I had, say, an ancient horoscope that I wanted to find the date for, the resource I needed to turn to was Tuckerman's Tables. These are uh, APS Memoirs, volumes 56 and 59. Uh, and they are two fat volumes of computer printouts that were made for Otto Neugebauer in the early 1960s using uh, early 1960s IBM computer. Computed positions of the five planets known in antiquity and the sun and the moon at five day and 10 day intervals over a little over 20, 22 centuries from the, uh, from the late Babylonian period up to about Kepler's time. 
Uh, you may have your own opinions on whether this is useful knowledge. Uh, <laughs> for me, it was extremely useful. And it's just one example of many things that the society has sponsored or published that really relate to trying to untangle the origins of the first uses of mathematical science to be able to understand the physical world. Uh, so I'm very proud to receive this award, not just personally for the, for the paper, but because I think it also does show that the society persists in thinking that the concept of useful knowledge is really a tautology. All knowledge is useful. So thank you very much. <laughs>
<clears throat> Accustomed as I am to public speaking, I'll make this very short and sweet. Many, many thanks to the committee and to the APS for this. I've had a long-standing, warm relationship with the press, and I really appreciate this token of appreciation. And I also hope we keep making a habit of this. <laughs> so thank you very much. Well, given the regularity with which Mark Smith has won this award, I don't know if the committee wants to consider renaming the award. <laughs> strike that. The jury will strike that. Okay. Uh, in 1786, two years after his election to the American Philosophical Society, John Hyacinth de Magellan of London made a gift to the APS of 200 guineas for medal to be awarded, quote, to the author of the best discovery or most useful invention relating to navigation, astronomer, astronomy, or natural philosophy, mere natural history only accepted, unquote. The medal, named the Magellanic Premium, was first awarded in 1790. It is the oldest medal recognizing scientific achievements given by a North American institution. Dr. Jeremiah, Dr. Jeremiah Ostreicher, a member of the Magellanic Premium Selection Committee, will present this award. I hope you can see me over this giant podium, the small person. <laughs> the 2018 Magellanic Premium Award is awarded to Sandra Faber. Sandy? <laughs> in recognition of her contribution to the study of galaxy formation and evolution, which have transformed our understanding of these building blocks of the universe and set the agenda for years to come. And it happens to be the field that I work in myself. Uh, from the discovery of the Faber-Jackson relation to her fundamental contributions to the cold dark matter theory of galaxy formation, she helped to make galaxy formation and evolution a quantitative science. Sandra Faber is one of the leading optical astronomers since the 1970s, whose contributions changed the study of galaxies from a qualitative to a quantitative science. Hubble bequeathed to us a picture of, a picture of galaxies that was qualitative and attractive. What do they look like? There were no numbers in anything that Hubble wrote on galaxies. Sandra Faber's observations and analysis showed the quantitative relations among the mass of galaxies, the size of galaxies, the velocity dispersion, the stellar populations, and the resident black holes that live in their centers in the massive elliptical galaxies that are the bedrock of extragalactic astronomy and the basis for the modern quantitative simulations of galaxy formation and evolution. Among the earliest observers to recognize the prevalence and importance of dark matter. She was among the earliest to note how feedback from supernova winds, that's how the, what happens in a galaxy affects the evolution of the galaxy from the active stars, how feedback from supernova winds would alter the evolution of galaxies. Her numerous prescient contributions form the basis on which modern understanding of galaxy evolution now stands. Dr. Faber is Professor Emerita of the University of California, Santa Cruz, and Astronomer Emerita of U the, uh, at University of California Observatories. The medal is engraved to Sandra Faber for transforming the understanding of galaxy evolution and formation. It gives me great pleasure to present the Magellanic Premium Medal.
what a thrill to receive a prize with such history. Uh, I want to thank the committee, of course, Mr. Magellan, even though he wasn't the Magellan of the Magellanic Clouds, it certainly resonates. Benjamin Franklin, because my understanding is that it was he who actually added the astronomy to the prize. And then finally, the taxpayers of the state of California, who have seen fit to support one of the finest optical astronomy programs in the world, which has uh, been responsible for my success. Now, when you get an award that goes back to 1790, you have to learn a little bit about it. So uh, I went online and looked at the previous recipients and was particularly struck by the first one, Francis Hopkinson, who is best known as the designer of the American flag and the great seal of the United States, among others. Uh, and I learned, though, that his award had nothing to do whatsoever with those activities. Evidently, he was a sailor, and he received the award for providing a design for a superior spring block. And I thought, well, that's an animal in Africa, isn't it? <laughs> but no, no, it turns out that it has something to do with navigation. That's the navigation theme. But we had to learn about it, and my husband surprised me with his version for what the recipient of the Magellanic Premium should receive. <laughs> I'll read this to you. This was a great surprise for me. It says, awarded to Dr. Sandra M. Faber, Magellanic Premium 2018. And having seen the beautiful things that you are giving to me, I'm not thinking that in any way you really would want to substitute this <laughs> for awardees in the future, but you could consider it anyway. Anyway, this is a spring block, which is a pulley that is mounted on a spring. And in the old days, the spring was there in order to absorb the sudden and unpredictable force of the wind so that the shroud would not break. These days, apparently, the, the purpose is a little different. It's to mount the, the pulley in a convenient way so that you can thread the, uh, the shroud through it more conveniently positions itself quite nicely. So thank you to all, but this actually inspires my last thank you, which is a thank you to my husband. <laughs> it's now my privilege to present the Benjamin Franklin Medal for Distinguished Achievement in Science. In 1906, the US Congress authorized the Benjamin Franklin Medal to commemorate the 200th anniversary of Franklin's birth. For three decades, only one was given, and that was to Marie Curie in 1921. Since 1937, they have been awarded more liberally, but still quite selectively for major contributions in, in the sciences, humanities, <coughs> or public service. The medal is being presented today in celebration of the American Philosophical Society's 275th anniversary. The recipient of the 2018 Benjamin Franklin Medal for Distinguished Achievement in Science is Mary Claire King, Professor of Genome Sciences and of Medicine, Medical Genetics at the University of Washington in Seattle. Dr. Mary Claire King has had a unique and productive career in medicine and science that has spanned many disciplines. She's made major differences in multiple fields of science. She initially graduated with a degree in mathematics from Carleton College in Minnesota before getting a doctorate in statistics from UC Berkeley. Her early work in genetics and the application of mathematics provided a unique combination for solving genetic problems. Her diverse works have included the demonstration that humans and chimpanzees are 99% genetically identical. Dr. Mary Claire King went to Santiago, Chile to teach as part of a University of California, University of Chile exchange program. Her time there was abbreviated when the Chilean government of Allende was overthrown. She later learned that a number of her colleagues and students had disappeared. She's recognized for the use of genomic sequencing to identify victims of human rights abuse in children stolen from their families and illegally adopted under the military dictatorship in Argentina. Dr. King is best known for her research to seek a genetic marker for familial breast cancer. 
Her early data focused on families in which members had developed cancer at a relatively young age, with the idea that that was more likely to reflect a genetic component in contrast to sporadic mutations. She was able to demonstrate that a single gene on chromosome 17 could be linked to many familial cases of breast and ovarian cancer. In 1991, Dr. King officially named the gene BRCA1, and this discovery paved the way for identification of the gene sequence. Her meticulous and landmark studies empowered women to be tested for deleterious genes that predispose them to breast and or ovarian cancer, and thus providing options for prophylactic surgeries or early and more frequent screenings. Her discovery of the BRCA1 and a second gene, BRCA2, revolutionized the study of numerous other hereditary diseases. Her contributions have made it possible for people to be informed of their genetic information that can aid them in making choices best for themselves and for their futures. In recognition of her numerous achievements in so many diverse fields, the APS is proud to award our highest honor, the Benjamin Franklin Medal for Distinguished Achievement in the Sciences, to Mary Claire King. on the table so that you I'm almost speechless but not quite <laughs> I'm I'm more honored than I can say that that this group from so many branches of productive useful knowledge would think about the work that that we do in genetics as worthy of this award and thank you very much in in thinking about what it means to be the winner of a of an award named for Benjamin Franklin, it occurs to me that all of us in science, in fact, share two perspectives that Benjamin Franklin clearly lived and wore very lightly. On the one hand, he very obviously saw science as an international activity. He saw the scientist as a citizen of the world. His friendship with Princess Dashkova and his welcoming her into this society represents his ecumenism across, across nationality, across gender, and across fields of science. He lived outside of the US for, or outside of the country for decades and practiced science across, across multiple different national boundaries. At the same time, he was a loyal and critical member of his own country and a founder of his own country. He saw no inconsistency at all in being, on the one hand, a citizen of the world as a scientist, and on the other hand, as being loyal to his homeland. And that seems to me to be very important for us, that we have every right to be loyal and critical members of our homeland, particularly at a moment when it, it, when it needs loyal criticism, and that we can cite Benjamin Franklin as our forebearer in exactly that way. He knew what it was to love the place you live and to be able to work with people from all around in a completely open, democratic, and joyful way. So I'm more honored than I can say to accept a medal named for him, and I thank you very much. <laughs> 